One of the most surprising things about Sucrose is that she offers a lot of cheap power for barely any investment and the only decision you need to do is to choose the build that's going to be the most beneficial for your team. There is no one better in the game than a Catalyst user when it comes to causing elemental reactions. And what's awesome about Sucrose is that not only can she create reactions easily, she can also spread the elemental statuses by simply using her basic attacks. And since she belongs to the Anemo element, you won't need to rely on her skills to cause the swirl reactions, because the basic attack you use on any enemy will spread the status to nearby monsters, although keep in mind, you only refresh the status the enemy it spreads to. You can see from this example, the fire status won't refresh if you hit it directly with your basic attack but it will get reapplied as a new fire status to nearby enemies and then hitting the other enemy will reapply the status back to the original. Basically, if you want to keep swirling forever, just make sure to switch targets so you can keep the statuses refreshed. And the reason why you want to swirl targets is that you will deal significant reaction damage but more importantly, any teammate that shares the element that gets swirled will get their elemental mastery increase from Sucrose's passive talent. And that's only the first buff she's going to provide. Now if you hit the enemy with her burst or skill, she's going to provide an additional buff for the whole team, which is going to be 20% of her own elemental mastery. So in reality, all you need to do is just use your skill once on the enemy that already has been affected by a status effect and you will trigger both of her passives. Finally, her skill and burst can pull objects towards the center, which means anything like Shongling's bear, Ember's dummy or Klee's bombs will get grouped together with enemies. It's also important to mention that the burst will pull things more easily as well as absorb the element it comes into contact while the skill will barely pull any objects and won't absorb any elements in side of it. All in all, she's the ultimate master of swirls and getting her to the 4th ascension will give you 2 passives to boost your team's elemental reactions, not to mention you will have an easy time keeping any other elemental statuses like Pyro and Electro constantly reapplied from all those swirls she will be creating. When it comes to weapons, the easiest one to obtain would be the Mappa Mare from the Blacksmith. You'll be getting Elemental Mastery from the substat, which is something you definitely want since you'll be sharing 20% of it with your team. And the passive is also a welcome addition if you're planning to use Sucrose as one of your damage dealers. Another very cheap and realistic option is Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. And this is an insanely useful weapon if you want to boost your team's main damage dealer since the 48% additional attack can be a huge help to anyone who's building a free-to-play team. And if you don't have any of these weapons available, you can also consider using Emerald Orb since it provides elemental mastery but keep in mind this is more of an early to mid game weapon that should be replaced once you acquire a good 4 star weapon. Speaking of great catalysts, one of the biggest drawbacks with Sucrose is her elemental skill. If you don't get lucky and unlock her first constellation, she will only have a single charge and one of the weapons that can fix the problem is the Sacrificial Fragments. Even on first refinement, it gives 40% chance to reset your elemental skill after using it and of course, the other awesome thing about the weapon is that it also gives elemental mastery. Now once you move over to artifacts, things get a little interesting. Probably the most easiest one to go for would be the Instructor's 4-piece set. Just keep in mind as of making this video, the description is worded incorrectly and you only need to trigger an elemental reaction to give your teammates the additional 120 elemental mastery. Of course, you can also do this with your skill and in fact you can get all 3 bonuses by using the skill once on the enemy with an elemental status. But if your skill is on cooldown, you can use your basic attack and trigger the four set bonus without any problems. The next important set to go for if you have serious elemental damage dealers would be the Viridescent Venerir 4 piece artifact set. Now depending on the situation, you might not want to spread yourself too thin and build Sucrose into a competent damage dealer, so it's enough to just put on the four set bonus and give your elemental damage dealers a huge boost in damage by lowering the enemy resistance. Finally, if you feel that you want to accelerate her burst, you can go for the two set bonuses of the Exile or Scholar's artifacts. One important thing to note about Sucrose is that anytime you swirl, the elemental reactions will only take into account Sucrose's level and her elemental mastery, ignoring attack and other stats. So this means if you don't want to bother building Sucrose into an actual damage dealer and instead rely on her damage from swirling, you can put on these artifacts without even enhancing them and get fast improvement with zero investment. Not to mention, your team will also enjoy the benefits of her increased elemental mastery. In summary, for the cheapest possible route, it's enough to put on the Instructor's 4-piece set without enhancing it and immediately start enjoying the benefits of a team-wide elemental mastery boost, but the same could also be said about the Viridescent set if you want to boost specific elemental damage of your teammates. 
Building a team with Sucrose is especially easy since as of now a lot of people are choosing to create teams based on elemental reactions. And because of her hyper focused nature to improve teams overall elemental mastery, she can fit in really well with anyone who has reliable skills in bursts, for example, Shongling and Fish will both leave their skills active on the field even if you switch them out so before you unleash your elemental combos, Sucrose can easily give a couple of hundred extra elemental mastery points without too much effort. She's also great for when you're doing mundane tasks like picking plants or mining, especially if you can put her together with another Anemo user like the Traveler, since you will receive an increased movement speed you get from the Resonance bonus. One thing is very clear, if you're busy creating the ultimate team and you want a quick and cheap option to get great benefits early, Sucrose will do that for you thanks to her passive abilities. And you don't even need to raise her talent levels or even equip her with the full enhanced artifacts in order to get the elemental mastery boost for the team. Of course, she can also deal a lot of damage if you put in the effort to get strong equipment for her, but luckily for us, at least she comes functional right out of the box or to be more precise when you unlock her second passive from her fourth ascension. But one of her drawbacks is that her elemental skill has a weak gravitational pull and her elemental burst has one of the biggest energy costs and longest cooldowns. It also doesn't help that she misses out on her additional charge for her elemental skill that's locked behind her first constellation. But overall, she's one of the cheapest support characters you can build, since she is an Anemo user which are basically plug and play units that work with any team combination. And because her elemental mastery buffs can easily increase reaction damage for the whole team, she can become a reliable teammate without putting in too many resources into her. Making these videos takes a while and the best way for you to help us out is by subscribing to our channel, enabling notifications and gently pressing the like button. For more Genshin Impact guides, check out our other videos or visit us at gotchagamer.com. Thank you for watching us.